also how I do my meat. I buy the hamburger and the great big packages. I buy all my meat that way. It's just so much cheaper. And then we separate it out and put it in Ziploc freezer bags so it doesn't get all yucky. And then because I have a planned ahead and I didn't make it out the night before, I'm always having this frozen chunk of meat I have to cook. You can see here in this And so I just try to get as much as I can. Then I'm going to flip it. Okay, do the same thing on this side. And we're going to cover it up again. Okay, now as you can see, my water's boiling. I buy my noodles in this huge package. And so, I'm just going to toss some in here. The noodles are like the rice or beans. They're basically going to double in size. So in my mind, I'm thinking if I were to have about this much uncooked, 
and I wanted about this high cooked, how much would that be? And I do it in here. It takes practice. In the beginning, I used to have to measure. And I'm going to put it about halfway up. And then when I when you see that it's going to expand, it's going to be twice as much as this. That'll be probably just about the right amount for that pan. And all I do is I twist it. I just have closed pins. Go like that and it goes back to my pantry. Now this, I use a colonnaded spoon. You have to stir it when you first add it. Any pasta. Make sure you stir it. Make sure there's not like little clumps where it's sticking together. Once you've stirred it really well and you've made sure there's not any clumps, we're just going to let it cook now. Pasta takes about 15-20 minutes. It's like anything else. If there's humidity in the air, if it's a hot day, if it's really, really cold and snowy, breads, foods, they, they fluctuate their cooking times and how well they do according to what the weather is. So there's never a cook good for X number of minutes and it will always be perfect. Most things are just simply not that way. If you undercook it, it's going to be chewy. If you overcook it, it's really blah. It's like eating flat starch. So pasta is something that you do want to cook the right amount. I stirred this twice. It tends to clump or even start to stick to the bottom. You don't want to stir it constantly, but you do want to keep it stirred and not sticking to the bottom or not clumping. Starchy things, when they're stirred, they get real mushy. Now when you think it's ready, you're going to pull it out and then just, ouch. Wait, we do it this way. It's too hot. You take one of these. Okay, it's perfect. It still has its form. It's soft, it's not chewy. If I let it cook any longer, it's gonna get mushy. So I'm gonna turn off my heat. We're gonna grab it. We come to the sink. And I have a big colander here in the sink. And you just pour it in there. And then I'm going to put this down here. This is the nice thing about this big sink. And go like this. Set it back here so it doesn't drip. Bring it back. I'm shaking off. There's a little bit of water. Some people, I was taught as a little girl to wash it. That it's, you don't need to wash it. And then I'm just doing this. pans. I get them at Sam's too. There's big ones. There's smaller ones. Whenever I do anything really cheesy, like a lasagna or a goulash or something, I use these because I can throw them away because we're going to put it in the oven. There's going to be cheese on it. It's going to get toasted. It's hard to clean a pan that has that toasted gooey cheese. Not only that, if that cheese, which is protein, goes down your drain, it's gonna to tend to clog it and stick in your drain. So it's just best, we use paper plates, we use this disposable, and that way we don't have to worry about scraping gooey cheese off the things. We just throw them away. That's one of my rules when I make something really cheesy. You eat on a paper plate. Okay, now the meat, you can see that it's all in small pieces now. I probably do need to break it up a little bit more, but there's too much water. I don't want to drain the meat because there's a lot of vitamins in here and flavor. But as you can see, I have it on a high boil. I'm just going to boil it down and get rid of that water. And then I also buy meat. I buy the very, very lean hamburger meat. If I bought regular hamburger meat, which is 2080, that 20 means that they've taken the fat, the white yucky stuff that's bad for your heart, 
and they put it in the hamburger. So when you cook it, you get a big thing of grease. Some people try to put that grease in a can. You can take paper towels. If there's a little bit of oil on your food, you can take a paper towel just like this. Put it right on top of the food. And then I take the lid and I go like this to get some of that grease. And then I just throw it away. But why buy something that you're gonna throw away? You don't want the grease in your body. You're paying, it's less money, but it's fat. Why not pay a little bit more and get more meat? I really don't think that the lean meat is more expensive because you are getting more meat and you're not throwing away the fat. It's healthier for you. And if it's good for your heart and it'll help you live longer and not have a heart attack or stroke or cancer, it's worth the extra two dollars. Water off the meat, so now I've just got the meat here. I don't want to drain it because there's all the vitamins and the flavors. So we're going to put the meat in here. On a non-stick pan, you want to use bamboo or wood or plastic. Then I'm going to add some tomato sauce. what I thought. I got another one. You notice I have two different brands. It doesn't matter what brand I use. Okay, the meat has salt and pepper, but this doesn't yet. There we go. You can use any kind you noodle you want. Some mothers will use a that little twisted noodle because it's easier for the little children to pick up. Some will use shell. It really doesn't matter. You can use the different colors. And you can use the ones with the vegetables in them. You can use the whole wheat, except I think they're really chewy. And then your children are less likely to eat it. See, I had plenty. That way it's a little bit thinner because we like the cheese. I could have left it thicker, but then we wouldn't be able to have as much cheese. And this is what makes it really yummy. I buy these great big bags at Sam's. They're so much cheaper. You can put them in smaller bags and freeze them and use them little by little. And actually, when you have cheese that hasn't cost you as much to use, you tend to make more things with cheese because it's not so expensive. So we're doing this. And then by doing these two small ones, actually these I usually just give away. There's usually some mother with small children that needs one or somebody else. Something's going on in their life. And so this is just a nice way. Fast. And I a lot of times I, I keep things like this in the freezer so that if I'm not around, the children can pull something else and have a dinner. We're just going to put it in the oven at 350 and you just need it long enough that the cheese is bubbling here it'll start bubbling around the edges first but wait till it bubbles or is super melted in the center and then you know it's ready and it's very very yummy okay here's the yummy goulash see with all that extra cheese on top i do not know of one child that doesn't like my goulash Mother's coming here all the time and we'll have it. 
I didn't know they would eat something like that. Children like bright colors. If you can make it yellow, they love yellow. They always eat my yellow rice. I've never gotten a child eat rice before. They like orange. Make it orange, make it yellow, red. They love those colors and they think it's yummy because it's colorful. And it is yummy. That's the good thing. And it's good for them. And it's easy and it's cheap.